Hey, let's put Millie in Gmod. Just like before, I'll be using C Minker the Cats mod. As always, 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 check the artist's permissions and make sure that you're even allowed to port their work into other games or engines in the first place. C Minker's fine with it, so let's get started. First, I'll import Millie in Blender. Like before, I'm using an older version of Blender. Anyway, the first thing I need to do is resize her around Moxie's height. Next, I import a default female player model. Gmod has two types of player models, male and female. Okay, three types. There's a zombie as well. I'm going to use the default female citizen model as the skeleton that they have are meant for female animations. In pose mode, I snap the female skeleton's bones, which I will now refer to as the Val skeleton, to Millie's bones. Just like Moxie, Millie only has two spine bones, while the Val skeleton has four. I simply just put the first two Val spines to Millie's first spine, and the other two to her last one. I don't do the cast yet, but I'll go over that soon. Millie's clavicle bones are located in the same place as where her neck is, so all three bones will be placed there. Now with the leg bones. You do not want to just move the calves and feet into Millie's skeleton like the other bones, as that causes distorted animations for the player model. Notice how the valve skeleton's legs have dashed lines. We want that dashed line to go straight down before we make any adjustments. We'll have to look at both angles to make sure that it's straight. Same thing applies when rotating the calves. Once the legs are straight, we can manually move them, still not snapping them to Millie's skeleton as they're not rotated to blend with her legs. As for the feet, don't move them to Millie's skeleton. Instead, look at the valve model and see where her shoes are. We want to have them touch the ground. This way, Millie in game will probably have her feet contact the floor. Also, never move the toe bones. Ever. Moving the toe bones will break your character's feet. This issue doesn't happen in Left 4 Dead 2, so you can move the toe bones freely if you need to there. But for Gary's mod, it will break. Do not touch them. After they have been repositioned, we can now re-rotate the legs to have it match as close as possible to Millie's legs. Once rotated, now we can snap the valve bones to Millie's bones and continue down to the feet. Rotate the feet so that they are flat on the ground. Doing all of this isn't flawless. You yourself may have already worked on player models in the past and have had their legs or calf twisted. That's typically caused by leg bones not being angled properly. I have a section in my proportion trick guide that goes over fixing this issue if you encounter it later. It'll be linked in the description. Sadly, this process is done again with the arms. There's not much to add other than the hands. Similar to the feet, you don't want your hands to be exactly where Millie's hands are. To be brief, imagine seeing the Valve model holding a weapon, like a gun, where her hand currently is. Make that Valve model invisible, and that's where Millie will be holding her weapons. The best way to angle and position the hand is to have the knuckles of both skeletons match as close as possible as well as having the valve index finger fall into place where Millie's index finger is as well. Once the hands have been rotated to match Millie's, we snap the first finger bones to Millie's skeleton, not the others, just the first. Just like the arms and legs, we then rotate their proceeding bones first before we snap them. Fingers are way more precise, plus this female model doesn't have her ring and pinky fingers move with the skeleton. We can get an idea of how the fingers are angled by enable local orientation. The selected finger bone will have a red arrow point us in the general direction. Once everything's rotated, then I can snap it. For the preceding thumb bones, remove any values used except for the X position. For the rest of the fingers, remove the Z position but keep the best. Once everything's in place, 
Apply the Val Skeleton as our new rest pose. We can now delete the female mesh. Next, I rename all of Millie's bones to the same ones that the Val Skeleton uses. Doing this ensures that Millie will be able to move her body with the Val Skeleton. The Source Engine handles eye tracking with materials. This iris model cannot work, so I'll add a new polygon that's just a flat plane around the eye. I want to also test to make sure that if Minnie blinks, her eye doesn't clip through. Looks good to me. Next, I'll make two materials for Minnie, Eyeball R and Eyeball L, and assign them to their respective names. Finally, I select both eyes in edit mode and convert them from quads to tries. To save some memory, I'll also delete parts of the mesh that's behind the new eye piece. Now, although the eye looks white, it doesn't really matter, as they'll be using a material that will completely change the look of its texture. I'll just have the eyes look yellow in the blender, but it won't matter when she's exploring. I separated the head as its own material, for more freedom for Gmod users with other tools. The coloring scene in Blender will not matter. Millie has a lot of bones for her tail. I want to reduce that by merging her weights and combining the bones. After that, I touch up the weights and make sure that the tail bends properly. On Millie's skeleton, I separate her unique bones from her skeleton, and then merge those bones to the Val skeleton. Then I parent them to their respective parent bones. You know, the tails connect to the pelvis, the hairs are attached to the head, that kind of thing. For facials, I just use the same facial structure from Wolf 2, as I plan on adding her later in that game as well. I do this by using the already existing facials, editing or combining them, or even making new ones. I'll also add a few unique ones for the users to play with. Those will be at the bottom of the facial list. Now I'm working on the helper bones. Helper bones are bones not used in animations, but instead move with the main bones. So, for example, a wrist bone would automatically move with a hand bone. To sum up helper bones, they reduce model distortion or twisting. Here's an example of Ellis having his helper bones removed, then enabled. Millie has one texture. I'll save it as a VTF file and enable compression to save file space. There's two compressions that you'll be using, DXT5 and DXT1. The main difference between the two is their ability to show translucency. DXT can show translucency, but it uses more space, while DXT1 can't show translucency, but it saves more space. Our eye tracking can't use Millie's texture, however, as it would instead just show the entire texture as the eye. So I'll have to just create a custom eye texture. I purposely made the image 99% translucent. Reason being is that the more opaque an iris texture is, the more shiny and reflective it gets. When the eye is a VTF, make sure that clamp S and clamp T are checked. This will remove the issue of a texture tiling itself or repeating itself. Basically, it makes our character's eyes no longer have the eyes of a fly. Because Gmod can run the game in DirectX 8, a mode that majorly lowers the game's graphics, I had to make another eye texture for an older style of eye material. It's basically just the black iris by itself. Here's a custom light warp texture that gave Millie a very tuned look. Since I also plan to use Millie in Left 4 Dead 2, I wanted to give her unique knee helper bones, since Left 4 Dead 2 uses those. As you see, if she bends her calves really far back, the knee looks very... I don't know, weak? <laughs> well, by using a helper bone, I can make the knee look more natural. As you can see with Coach, his knee still looks fine even when his calf is bent far back. That's the goal. So I get to work on hand weight painting her new legs. After a while, I've added improved calves and knees for her to bend with. I also improved her thighs, and even her small feet were adjusted for the high bone placement. Now on to the physics model. A physics model in Source is basically what the main model uses to interact with the world with. It is a much lower poly, cheaper model. I've made a duplicate Millie, 
and I'm removing unnecessary details. I then delete parts of her model so that her joints are separate. I select a limb and use the option Convex Hull, which fills in any gaps and simplifies the limb. I also give it a material. Even though one isn't used, Source needs all models to have materials for it to work. Finally, I decimate the model, or force low polyfy the model, to make it less expensive. Oh, and don't forget to select everything to make the model render its faces as smooth. All that's left for the Fizz model is to assign all the limbs to its respective bones. Make sure that not two limbs share the same bone. They have to use their own. Since this is Gary's mod, we need to duplicate our valve skeleton, enter pose mode, highlight everything, press I, and pick look rotate. This will insert keyframes into every bone making this an animation. This is our default animation, or the T-Pose for Millie. This is something you don't have to do with other Source games, to my knowledge, as replacing characters come with their own T-Pose animations that you would use. Since I need to use the size proportion trick, I opened up another blender, imported the same original female player model, deleted all her helper bones to save space, deleted her mesh, and inserted keyframes to all the bones. I exported this as the female base SMD file. I'll be using Jazz McNade's Perl script to make the reference file for the proportion trick. If you want to know more, check out that guide I referenced earlier. With all our files exported and placed in the same location as our QC file, open up the command prompt by typing SMD into the file explorer's directory shower thing. I inputted the following. It's important to also include the extensions of the files as well, otherwise the command will not know what files you are referring to. This will create our reference file, which will be named output by default. I open the QC file and edit it to import the correct files for the mod. I also change the flex files to Leopard at 2's flexes to save time on typing. Here you can see me adding in the additional flexes for Millie. Back in Blender, I need to get the values on where Millie's eyes are for the eye tracking to work. So I just go in edit mode and select the eye and view it in here. I then copy those values into the QC file. Bear in mind that you'll always have to readjust these values. It's never perfect. Finally, I have to edit the VRD file, which is where the helper bones get their information from. To summarize, I have to use the new values from Millie's model instead of the old values and replace the last three trigger lines with three zeros. Now it's time to compile and test. Uh, oh sh time to compile and test! <sighs> okay. Okay, there we go. The eyes move, but they could be readjusted. The facials work, though. I have to readjust the shoulders as well. There! Working eyes, better shoulders, jiggle bones for holler, tail and hair bones, hit boxes, it all looks great. The only things left are the sitting animations. These will have to be adjusted manually by making custom animations. Long story short, I import the animation, eyeball where it looks like her butt will be, and raise the animation up. I do this for the sit, sit roller coaster, drive jeep, and drive airboat animations. Okay, there. Her sitting is fixed. With all that, we finally have a player model that... I forgot the first person arms. Well, similar to before, the model has to be deleted with the arms left over. Position the arms so that the hands match the original view model's hands. Unlike last time, pose Millie's fingers to match the view model's fingers, instead of the other way around. Doing this will reduce any strange bending from the animations. Once everything's posed, edit the model and have the arms stretch out around the same length as the view models. With that, there's Millie's first person arms. 
After compiling, we can see the animations for the fist sweat, as those are built in. In order for Gmod to load our new files, we need an LUA script. I'll leave a link in the description to a Steam guide that goes over this. Basically, this will have our player model show up in our PM selector and have it use our first person arms. I'll also add in friendly and hostile NPCs. Compiling NPCs are easy since they work with the same skeletons for player models. Just replace the include model lines to have it use NPC animations. Never, ever, at least with my experience, ever have both player model and NPC animations in the same file. This will bug out the NPCs, making them twitched and t-posed all the time. Keep them separate. In regards to the hostile NPC, we're using a female skeleton. Hostile NPCs only work with males, so what will happen if I just use the female skeleton? Loading it up in the game nearly shows up. The model also uses the correct hands for first person. The model itself works too. Look, she even blinks. As for the friendly NPC, she also works. What about the hostile one? Uh, on inspection, the hostile variant is off. The limbs appear more stretched out than it should. So how would this be fixed? Well, sadly, Millie would need a separate model altogether that has the male skeleton instead of the female skeleton, which means reposing another Val skeleton again. Oh, one more thing. Male NPCs don't use the ring and pinky fingers. So, if you want those to move, they'll have to be merged with the middle fingers. After doing that, let's refresh the compile. There we go. Now the hostile variant looks normal. All that's left now is to make some icons for the NPCs and to take some screenshots for the mod. After loading in a more appropriate map, I start posing Millie. I'll try to keep this section brief, as most of this is just spent on posing. Here's something that will be for a screenshot and a thumbnail. After getting the lighting right and enabling depth of field, here's my screenshot. For this, I spent a very long time just trying to get things right. Even at 1500% speed with cuts, this is still not fast enough to go through all of it. And since I spent so much time on it, I may as well get another angle with a different face. Yeah, I may as well get a picture of an NPC. I mean, they do exist. Oh, don't forget about the hands. I always like to just break the fourth wall and use the player model to make the scene. And there we go. There's my screenshots. I hope this video was informative, or at the very least somewhat entertaining, or just something. The mod will be linked in the description below, of course. Have fun!